Hi everybody, my name is Svandiar Kuhi and I'm Simulation Product Manager at Intercad and today we are going through uh, our webinar Filtration System Design in SolidWorks Flow Simulation using Porous Media Approach. The objective for the webinar today is starting with the uh, filtration procedure and terminologies. We are also going to introduce filtration types and its application as one very important part of any filtration system is a porous media. We are introducing that uh, structure of a porous media. We're going over the flow in a por uh, porous media. And the very essential part of any porous media is its permeability and uh, let's say flow resistance. So we're looking at the flow inside the porous media and looking at the flow resistance calculation. We're extending our, uh, let's say, discussion to uh, the specific application of the porous media in filtration system while we're looking at uh, catalytic uh, converter systems and be introducing a case study for the analysis of catalytic converter using porous media in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, if you're looking on more into detail in this case study, we are going to learn how we assign porous media to a dummy solid body and what are the porous media settings in terms of permeabilities formulation and the calculations, uh, pore size, assigning the material properties. And then for our specific case study, we are going to look at the optimum design of our catalytic converter system while comparing two types of substracts, which is isotropic and unidirectional, uh, let's say, filters. All right. Now let's start with the definition of filtration, common terminology and the procedure. Filtration is a process whereby solid particles present in a suspension are separated from the fluid in a liquid or gas form employing a porous medium. As you can see in a picture, uh, the essential part is the filter. Well, it is basically working on a very simple concept. The pore size of the filter is smaller than the size of the particle to be separated. So this is the starting point and the basis of uh, the um, procedure of filtration. Uh, there are three distinct definitions here. It's celery, which is suspension to be filtered. Uh, a filter, which is a porous media used to retain the solids. And a filtrate is the clear liquid passing through the filter. So this uh, operation is starting by placing the filter medium and let the uh, uh, feed started either as unidirectional or cross flow or any other uh, configuration. Since the particle size are bigger than the filter pore size and we have the pressure, uh, let's say, uh, gradient which is moving the fluid, the particles are getting deposited into the filtrate, uh, filter and uh, gravity is also acting and let the clear flow to exit. One very important fact to remember all the time, when we just starting brand new filter, uh, the, uh, the flow rates are uh, pretty high and since uh, the filtration is, procedure is continuing, we have a cake layer of deposition for the solid material and the efficiency of the filter may reduce and reduce and at some certain time to be replaced. Filtration types. Well, we're talking about uh, the mechanism of filtration and we can categorize it into two base categories. Mechanical filters or physical or biological filters. In a category of mechanical filters, we're talking about physical porous medium, which is uh, filtering uh, our fluid, it could be as surface filtration. Well, all the uh, so solid particles are getting deposited and filtered on the surface of the filter, and there would be narrow channels which let the fluid go out. But in a case of deep filtration, uh, there is no surface deposition based on the absorption and capil uh, capillary effects. The uh, particles are getting absorbed by the narrow channels walls and the fluid is also passing through. Uh, 
Uh, if we have more refined uh, sort of application, very sensitive one, we can have nano uh, or ultra uh, filtration as well. But <clears throat> filtration is not not just a, a mechanical operation, it could be physical or biological, well it's mostly based on the chemical reactions between the uh, filtrate and the particles. Well we can have solvents to uh, resolve all the particles and make a deposition of them. Uh, this category can include hot filtration, cold filtration or vacuum filtration. Since this is not uh, the category or the focus of our, uh, let's say, approach today, we are not going to introduce more detail about it, and uh, you can definitely find more information on open literature or, uh, about physical and biological applications. Uh, there are lots of uh, applications uh, around us about the filtration. One very main category we can mention the sterile uh, products such as air filtering, air conditioning system. Uh, well, it can be uh, a, a mesh, re very refined membrane mesh type of membrane filters or uh, the HBA which is cross-sectional uh, and very wavy wo or woven form of the filtration and fabrics. The other one which is wastewater treatment, well we'll be basically talking about gravels and different layers of sands and gravels which is filtrate and separate the uh, let's say particles in, uh, in in a wastewater and it's ending up with a clean purified water at the end. Uh, production of the bulk drugs or in automotive industry which is the main focus of our uh, let's say presentation today is catalytic converters which is a device that purifies or um, let's say um, converts the more toxic uh, um, exit of the engine to less toxic uh, substance or gases by doing a reaction between the particles and the surface of the uh, substracts inside the catalytic converters. Alrighty, now <clears throat> one of the very essential part of any filtration system is the porous media and porous media is usually a solid material containing pores. Typically uh, the solid particles inside the, uh, let's say, porous media, which is called grains, they are not connected, and the pores inside this, uh, let's say, uh, structure is getting connected. So this is more like very coarse, uh, let's say, porous media. But in some cases, we have solid components which they are connected and forming an skeletal and this is also called matrix and uh, matrix or frame and we can see <clears throat> a couple of examples here you can see the grains and we can see the pores in typical one or porous media matrix as we can see it here the, so the passage or the pores are connected and also solids are connected as well so again they have different application and can be used in uh, different categories. Now, very importantly, we have to understand the fl flow in a porous media. The flow of a liquid through a porous media is following the same rule as any other liquid, uh, you know, passing through the medium offering resistance, which is the ratio between driving force and resistance or let's say if you would like to formulate it, said volume flow rate or Q dot, which is volume per time, is the permeability divided by viscosity times pressure difference. And permeability is the measure of ability of porous material to allow fluid to pass through it. Permeability is also the, uh, dependent on so many factors, such as the pore size in a medium, how they are getting connected, their shapes, and etc. And that can cause different reaction or uh, allowing different uh, flow rates through the media. Now, let's have a closer look and make a very simple example of a single tube with a diameter of D or 2R, with the length of L, and with the pressure difference of the fluid as delta P, which is the P2, which is P2 minus P1. So what we know basically from fluid mechanics, 
is we have no slip boundary condition at the solid interface, so velocity is zero and it's maximum uh, uh, at the middle of it. So what is basically happening? We have a driving force, which is a pressure force. We have a resistance, which is frictional force. And basically we know force is pressure or stress, uh, shear stress per area and it's following uh, Newton uh, law of viscosity and dependent on the velocity variation and viscosity as well. So equating these two one, we can find the shear stress as a function of pressure difference, length and also the distance from the wall. Do the mathematical operation and do the integration over the volume, we can find the maximum velocity as uh, you can see, which is delta P R square 4 mu L, so dependent again on the viscosity and the uh, second power of radius and pressure difference. Or we can find the, uh, let's say, volume flow rate and introducing the permeability, which is the flow resistance of a single tube against a fluid. This is a very well-known equation, <coughs> which is called parcel law. This is true for a single tube sort of uh, scenarios, but when we go into real models and uh, the, uh, let's say, um, prosody and the structure of uh, porous media is different, then we need to develop more and more complex equations to define or calculate the permeabilities here. We might have isotropic medium, well the permeability is the independent of direction or unidirectional which is in just one direction. We can have axisymmetrical or we can have orthotropic means the uh, permeability is different in a different direction. So basically we're trying to formalize or characterize the prosody or the shape of the porous medium depends on the distribution of the pores. So as we said, our calculation needs to be updated in these cases and there are some uh, very well-known equation such as Darcy equation or cosine Kármán equation which can be more advanced and considering more facts such as a pore size and also permeability and also cross-sectional area and etc. So these are more like uh, um, analytical approach, hand calculation. However, we can have more an effective way of approaching uh, any filtration design system and finding the flow resistant or per permeability using any computational fluid dynamic approach. Basically in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation we do have this ability and we can find the, uh, let's say, um, flow rates by representing a porous media as a distributed resistance to the flow. So what is happening here, instead of having uh, a porous media as a physical object, we are going to represent the porous media as a dummy solid body and uh, let's say specify the uh, properties of a porous media to it, such as permeability, such as uh, flow resistance, such as prosody and etc. A very common approach since we might run a very high scale or big scale uh, of the projects and objects. What we're trying to do is first we isolate a unit lens of the porous media we have and test it against different flow condition. For instance, as you can see here, I can set up a, a unit lens of my porous medium with whatever shape they have as in close to the reality and any, any distribution of the pores here and applying different pressure difference or uh, here or different, uh, the, let's say, flow rates and finding its resistance against different pressure. So velocity connected or uh, related to pressure difference or even volume flow rate uh, against the pressure difference. So this is how we find, uh, uh, let's say, a 
resistance, a flow resistance or permeability of our object in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. And this is per unit length, so it's very, uh, let's say, small geometry. It doesn't take a long to run, and it could be uh, run as a series of study to find this resistance for the unit length. What is happening next? is we are going to run or use this unit area resistance for the big scale project when we are selecting our dummy bodies or the area which is, uh, let's say, going to be assigned as a porous medium. Well, the calculation are basically re referring to the unit lens uh, uh, resistance here. Our test to find the flow resistance can be in a various form. So you might test pressure drop, velocity, and dimensions. Again, you will find the relation between velocity and pressure drop for a sample parallel pipe porous body. Or you can use flow rate versus pressure drop. And you can see the flow resistance is representing by K with different formulas. In some cases, we can establish a linear relation between uh, let's say uh, velocity and uh, size of the pores, which this is dependent on the velocity formulation. So there are two constants of A and B. We have to calculate from the test. Or if we have uh, a flow uh, in a porous medium in a narrow channel and it's a laminar flow, we can make the formulation or the type of the resistance adjusted on pore size, and this is the formulation we use. Well, we basically viscosity, density, size of the pore, and prosody are the main factors. Uh, in the case of we having a turbulent flow in a narrow channel, uh, we do have uh, dependency on a pore size and Reynolds number. Well, the representation of the flow resistance is depending on, again, velocity and, uh, let's say, density, pore size, and also is a function of Reynolds number. Well, the Reynolds number is a dimensions, dimension less number, which is more showing us the characteristic of the flow if it's, re, uh, let's say, laminar or uh, turbulent. And it's a combination of density, velocity, diameter, or let's say hydraulic diameter, viscosity, and prosody. And you can see this equation has its own relations, constants, and formulation to replace here. Therefore, we're going to conduct a test on a sample or unit lens area of our real porous media with very, uh, let's say, uh, small scale that can be run very quickly and precisely to find the relation between pressure drop velocity, pressure drop flow rate, or from the beginning dependent on the pore size either in a laminar or turbulent flow. Since we have done this part, then we can move on to the, our actual project and make a correction to our local density and viscosity. And these options are, uh, let's say, available in software, uh, let's say, settings. And we can uh, introduce a realistic calculation for uh, our porous medium. All righty. Now, let's go to the real application of the porous media in filtering, which is catalytic, uh, let's say, converter system. A catalytic converter device is a device used to reduce the toxicity, uh, toxic, uh, toxicity of emission from an internal combustion engine. Well, we can use, uh, find them, uh, let's say, in a motor vehicle exhaust system. Also can be used in uh, generator sets, forklifts, mining equipment, trucks, bus, trains, and etc. What is happening inside a catalytic uh, converter? There is an environment where there are chemical reaction wherein toxic combustion by products are converted to less toxic substance. So the particles inside the toxic flow is going to deposit or having an interaction with a different section of the uh, converter and be deposited or converted to the different particles. Having a closer look, you can see there is a picture. 
Uh, basically, a catalytic uh, let's converter is uh, has a stainless steel uh, body and different sections such as substracts and there are different material and different reactions are happening here for example catalytic active material and uh, what is happening there are different molecules of gases so, such as CO2 or NOx is coming in and as they're deposited on the top or doing the interaction with the solid bodies then the output would be like water, CO2 and N2 which is less toxic than what is being entered to it. All right, what are the main challenges when we are doing a catalytic converted design? Basically, if we have larger substrate with bigger interactive surface, we will have more reaction and basically we have less to uh, toxic gases coming out. But in contrast, we have one very important fact, Lob larger substrates inside the catalytic converter that's simply ending up with more back pressure and restricting the exhaust gases. That's in very hypothetic, uh, hypothesis sort of cases can, may, uh, can cause stalling in our engine. So there would be always uh, uh, an optimum uh, sort of way of having enough surface area for interaction and the pressure, back pressure inside the, uh, the let's say, catalytic system. The other fact which is very important in design is more uniform distribution of the exhaust mass flow rate over the catalyst cross-sectional uh, area. That simply means all of the area of the substracts are getting involved for the chemical reaction and they veering down uh, at the same time. So that is a very important to look at the severability of, uh, let's say, our catalytic system. Uh, traditionally, uh, this is getting built up and being tested uh, in, in uh, let's say, um, laboratories. This could be a very time consuming, very, uh, let's say, um, toxic, and also, uh, let's say, quite expensive. But with the advance of computational fluid uh, uh, dynamics, we can do the simulation of the flow patterns and using our actual, uh, let's say, uh, components and looking at the optimum design by looking at the uh, flow regimes, looking at the magnitude of the pressure drop and maybe uh, predicting any stall if might happen. In SOLIDWORKS, we do this, uh, let's say, simulation very efficiently. Instead of having, uh, let's say, the porous medium or the substract as the physical object, we are going to make them virtual, do the testing for a unit length area, and just put the flow resistance inside the solver or the uh, porous media setting and model all uh, let's say flow resistant inside the whole model. So that will save a lot of time to, uh, to prevent of looking at the strictly modeling of the all individual passages through the uh, porous media. So we have a correct calibration of the porous media flow resistance and we are putting it in uh, side the uh, solid box flow uh, simulation setting. All right, let's have a look to the case study. We're trying to optimize a converter, uh, catalytic converter performance by comparing isotropic and unidirectional uh, substract. So this is the basic uh, model geometry we have. We have airflow inlet at 12 meter per second. We have an intersection or midsection for measuring the pressure and the outlet discharge is at atmospheric pressure. We have two substracts which have been represented by dummy bodies and we are going to have two different configurations here. The first configuration is considering both substracts to be isotropic, uh, let's say porous media with 50% of porosity and the permeability type we are going to use is velocity dependent. In a second configuration, we are going to assume the first one as unidirectional and the second one as isotropic. And then we are going to compare which one is the best in terms of 
rate of the flow and also in traction uh, of the flow with the, uh, inside the uh, uh, porous medium and also uh, uh, entry and exit velocities. Alrighty, now let's go to the case study and opening up our model here. All right. Now you can see I have two projects been defined, isotropic and unidirectional isotropic. So we can see from the model, this is the housing. The first substract, second substract, there are lead, leads one at the uh, exit, exhaust piping, lead on inlet, and there would be a dummy body lead here as well for the uh, let's say pressure measurement and simply we are starting creating a SOLIDWORKS flow simulation project by going over the wizard and inside the wizard you have to answer a couple of the questions. Now let's have a look to what I have created first in the isotropic definition. All right. After you're creating a project, you always can go and review your general setting. What we have assumed that this is an internal analysis, so fluid inside the enclosure. Uh, without rotation, it is steady state. Gravitational effects are not, uh, let's say, active, and we are not considering any heat transfer analysis. The working fluid is air and it can be considered as laminar and turbulent flow. On our walls, we have adiabatic walls, no heat transfer through the walls, and the roughness is zero micrometer, very smooth walls. And initial condition, everything is at atmospheric pressure, around 20 centigrade, and there is no velocity inside the domain. Okay. The next stage to define our project is to apply our boundary conditions. So inserting boundary condition, the first thing I've done is basically select the inside phase of our, my inlet to assign the inlet velocity of 12 meter per second. Thermodynamic parameters, atmospheric pressure 20 centigrade. And this is my turbulence parameter. So I'm using turbulence intensity and lens quite low values of turbulence for the inlet, 2%. And the next one, which is the static pressure. And I have assigned static pressure of 101.325 pascals at 20 degrees and same turbulence parameters. Okay, now it's the time, since you are importing or creating a flow project, for your geometry, you can see these dummy bodies, these two objects, are not representing any pore. What is happening? We have to go and insert a porous medium. So right click, insert a porous medium. Then you can have a selection of your actual object to be considered as a porous media. So this is what you do and select. So if you're looking at what I've done here, right click edit definition both of these objects been selected and then this is the time I'm specifying the permeability prosody and the other calculations I do have to this material so you can see by clicking create and edit I'm accessing my engineering database and in my engineering database I've gone through porous media option there are some predefined material such as isotropic porous media and you can see item properties and any tables and curves being assigned here. These are existing item, isotropic porous media or screen material. You can see this is my definition. Or unidirectional, again you can see there is pre-exist. But what I've done, because I have my specific porous media, I've made my material in user-defined categories and basically there is one isotropic and item properties. First, prosody you enter as 0.5, 
permeability type is isotropic, however, we can change it uh, to unidirectional, axisymmetrical, or autotropic. So this is first setting we can do, permeability type, and change to unidirectional, axisymmetrical, and autotropic. The next setting you can have is how we calculate the resistance. There are a couple of options as we have introduced in PowerPoint presentation. We can make a pressure drop flow rate dimension dependency, dependent on the velocity, depend on the pore size, depend on a pore size and Reynolds number, or depend on pressure drop velocity and dimension. So by selecting any of them, you might go for any uh, other type of, uh, let's say, entries here. For instance, if you're looking at the predefined categories here of half an inch, uh, let's say, metal mesh, that is from the library. It's pressure drop velocity dimension dependent, and that is going to have this curve as pressure drop versus velocity. This is exactly what I've said in sample testing. So you will get your physical porous media modeled and then put it in a, uh, in, in a wind tunnel and apply different velocity and measure the pressure before and after and provide this graph. This will tell the software that your object, half an inch mesh, uh, let's say metal mesh media, uh, the permeability is dependent on the pressure uh, drop velocity and dimension and the reactions are here. Now the software have the base of the calculation and it's going to apply the same material resistance in a larger scale in our actual project. Okay guys, so this is what we have done at the uh, this stage and we are happy with what we got, so isotropic this is what we have selected or created, item properties. You can see I have selected porosity of 50% to be isotropic and dependency on the velocity. Well, if you remember again the formula, I can bring it on for you. I'm going to use this formulation as I'm showing you in a minute. All right, so this is the formula I'm going to use, dependency on a velocity. A times velocity plus B over density. This is the formulation I'm going to use. The constants are calculated from my testings and I found A and B constant values as 57 and 0 and I've put it here for calculating the probability or flow resistance here. Alrighty. So since you are assigning these two objects as a porous media and set the permeability type, calculations, and prosody, there is one very important thing happening here. You always can have a look to the active components inside your flow simulation project. And you can see these two objects are suppressed, not considered, but their effect is being considered inside your flow simulation since it's been assigned to a porous media isotropic both sides. Okay, so right now we have set up all the boundary conditions. What is the inlet flow? What is the outlet flow? And we selected two solid objects and assigned them or redefined them as a porous media isotropic 50% and dependent on the velocity. And again, the constants are coming from my individual test of unit lens area of these objects. All right, one of the very essential part of each flow simulation, uh, let's say, um, uh, project is the goals, the values we would like to trace on or combine as a formula, such as you can see inlet average volume uh, total pressure. So you can see this is a surface goal of foot. I would like to trace the total pressure at the inlet, outlet total pressure, and also the pressure at the mid level. Then I have made a formula, which is inlet total average pressure minus mid average total pressure. So the pressure drop from inlet to this section, 
and also I've created the second equation which is again mid total average pressure here and outlet average pressure there so the pressure difference or the pressure drop inside the piping and inside the porous media section or the catalytic system all right so these are the parameters i would like to trace since the focus of this study is not about the mesh and refinement of the mesh then you can just quickly review that we have used automatic mesh and a level of refinement for mesh is three and then i'll start running the project and finding the answer alrighty guys so you always can call in your project and create exactly the same thing as I've done and I name it uni ISO then the only difference you can see between this project and the previous one is when I've selected my porous medium the first uh, the the second uh, let's say um, object here is isotropic and I've selected the other one and assign it to a unidirectional. And if you're looking at its property, again, it's dependency on the velocity with the same values, but the type of permeability is unidirectional and same prosody. So either you have multiple, let's say, units inside your, uh, let's say, filtration system, and you would like to assign the same porous medium to it, to, to them or having a selection on each so inside a project we might have two different type of porous medium alrighty so running the project make sure uh, all the goals are just getting converted and uh, contributed to the, to the convergence then we can review the result by looking at different let's say plot, plots and graphs let's first have a look to our isotropic and there is a cut plot which is showing me the velocity of the flow field inside all the medium all right so a flow which is going through the piping system and not being fully developed and entering a catalytic system activating the flow trajectory there is one important fact we can see there is very limited, uh, let's say, uh, interaction on a top section of my first substrate with the fluid. And also we can see after the flow is getting expanded since it is isotropic and it's letting the flow to expand, then it's getting slower and getting unidirectional and going out. But comparatively, if I switch to my unidirectional isoporous medium I can see the cut plot a bit different same flow characteristic entering however I can see more directional fluid even on the first substrate and a bit more quicker uh, let's say uh, flow getting out and looking at the flow trajectories what I can see the vertical flow inside here is less you always can uh, let's say um, generate a specific report on a specific location by saying it's x y plots what I've done in this case let me hide these two graphs and get back here I've created two sketches one line here this can be done before and after running your project and the other one is here after the second substract okay one and two then I've created the XY plots on these sketches to show me the velocity in Z direction over these lines and making a show it is showing me two plots here we're going to discuss and compare these two results in a separated let's say uh, slide very quickly so this is the option for the comparison for me to understand what is the flow regime and variation before and after the uh, let's say porous media in both uh, let's say isotropic and unidirectional uh, let's say porous media all right now let's go and compare 
what we have found in this study. All right. The first thing you can see from, uh, let's say, cut plots is we have more uniform flow inside the unidirectional section. That is slightly uh, higher values of velocity on the second one and faster flow exit. But one very important fact, as we can see it in both flow trajectory presentations, sound check. So uh, I believe there would be a problem. I hope it's been solved. All right. So again, I'm repeating. So what we can see here is that from the uh, cut plots, we can see non-uniform flow is coming and it's getting, let's say, directional when it's passing or entering the first, uh, let's say, um, section of unidirectional porous medium. So it's distributing more evenly and lets all the section of subtract to interact with the flow and it's a very great uniform flow, uh, let's say, uh, regime here. That is simply means the veer on a substrate are, uh, let's say, even and that could, uh, let's say, engage all the section of it. But again, we have a bit faster and a bit turbulent flow when it's entering the uh, second unidirectional one and then we exit. But comparatively, if you're looking at the isotropic isotropic configuration, we can see since the flow is entering and low to expand, lower values of the flow is expected on the section, sec, second sh section. So expansion and slower means better interaction, but some areas are left over and also on a second substract we can have uh, more and more uh, interaction. If we're looking at our 2D plots, we can confirm these two facts. So basically the red and the blue lines are representing my, my velocity as, as, as uh, at these two sections. So obviously, more flow developed going out from unidirectional isotropic, you can see, and lower values of velocity happening here. The other way, we can see less developed flow in isotropic, isotropic, and lower, uh, higher values of velocity here. So the time of travel would be very important to understand what sort of interaction we have. So each of these category uh, uh, configuration has its own advantages. Uh, either we would like to make it slower and looking at the pressure difference and see how, uni, uh, let's say, uniformly the flow is going there and we have the interaction for, uh, let's say, converting the toxic flow to, uh, let's say, less toxic flow. Uh, or we will like to um, look at the, uh, let's say, warranty and uh, the time of the use for, yeah, for uh, the, the, uh, the time of interaction and the uh, servability of our catholic system here. Alrighty, so that is concluding our presentation today and what is, uh, what, what I would like to, uh, let's say, mention here is inside the flow simulation, the porous medium approach is what you have as entry level package of uh, flow simulation where you can uh, do a different projects such as internal, external and assigning any porous medium. You can consider heat transfer even with the porous medium, uh, rotating components or fans if you have, compressible non-Newtonian fluid, laminar flow or time dependency and also exchanging with your FEA software in SOLIDWORKS. If you are into the business of electronic cooling module, then we have a specific library and options there, such as, uh, let's say, uh, fans, uh, heat pumps, uh, let's say, PCB generator, and are considering Joel heating. And also, if you're doing HVAC system design, then comfort parameters can be, uh, let's say, calculated. You have the option for tracer studies and advanced radiation here. 
All uh, the examples we are introduced here, you can find it in your SolidWorks Flow Simulation Help. And uh, you have the files on, so inside your system and the description of uh, the project. You can have a closer look, make a practice yourself. And if you have any inquiry regarding the technical issues, please contact me, svandyarkuhi at intercat.com.au. Or if you have any, uh, let's say, commercial discussion and you are looking for purchase the software, then please have a contact with John Belsham at intercat.com.au. I would like to thank everybody for attending this webinar and hope you, uh, to see you soon on our upcoming webinars. Have a good day.